right, welcome everybody to week 14 or something like that. Um, so, yes, I, uh, okay, so we're going to, we're going to talk more about Quake today. Um, hopefully you guys all know how to set up uh, firewall settings on your router, whoever it is that's going to be hosting the mod is going to need to open up ports on the router. It's port 27500, I believe. Quake wall ports. No, that's the action. That's hmm. Interesting. So I would I would open up all the ports from like twenty seven thousand to thirty thousand to forward to the server. Uh, I can't remember what it's set up to use on default. <clears throat> You'd like to set up uh, robot picks of a herring sandwich, lifts it to the mouth of the egg robot. <laughs> yeah, if you guys ever get a chance to go to Himeji Castle, it's really nice. It's really nice. Let's see here. Quick release. Server or edit port twenty seven thousand. Uh, all right. Yes, yeah, so I'd, I'd open up all those ports in that range, twenty seven thousand to thirty thousand, something like that. server thirty two megabyte heap look at all that RAM look at all that RAM thirty two megabytes of RAM required <laughs> status maybe twenty seven thousand five hundred okay yeah so uh, open up port twenty seven thousand five hundred and that will be good enough for your teammates to connect to the server with you and you can use VS Code to cooperatively edit the source code and things like that. So what we're going to do today is we are going to go on a tour through the Quake C code base. Hopefully you guys have all got it downloaded, installed. You got Visual Studio Code installed. You got the Quake C plugin installed. Yeah, give me a, give me a show of hands on, on the uh, chat channel if that is indeed the case. I've got a readme file here that uh, tells you where everything is, uh, how to build it, how to launch the server, how to launch the client, how your friends can connect to you. Um, this file right here, readme.txt, is um, everything you need to know. Um, it does mention Blender, so if you wanna make your own models for it, then um, you can download and install Blender, and there is a plugin that will read and write the Quake uh, model format called MDL, and um, and so you want to install that and you can export an MDL and then you just put it into the appropriate directory which is called progs which is a very badly named directory because they call progs the programs right like the you know that these are called progs the the mod is called a prog and I don't know why they call the models progs it's a pretty dumb name honestly but these are all model files uh, except for the sprites. So if you ever see a .spr file, that means sprite, and a sprite is a 2D picture. And so Quake has the ability to display 2D pictures in the world uh, for various purposes. And so um, flames and things like that will sometimes be sprites that are just flat. And as you walk around them, you'll see the flame rotates to always be facing you. It's like a billboard that always rotates to face you. Uh, sprites don't look very good. Uh, but like the laser dot um, for the... Um, the sniper rifle it's always facing you so it doesn't it doesn't rotate on the world it's just always a dot and the further away it is the smaller it is but, you know. so it's good for that one um explosions uh, like a rocket explosion will sometimes be drawn as a sprite it looks really bad honestly um let's use models for most of the stuff if you're going to be doing that and you'll see there's actually quite a lot of models in here there's 344 models that come in the 
uh, release of this. And that's not counting the things that are in the pack files. There are pack files as well. These things here, dot pack, dot pack, dot pack, dot pack. All these things are uh, entire file systems. And so they'll have models, sounds, maps, all the kind of stuff uh, in them. They're basically like a zip file. And so if you're gonna do a big release, you'll release a pack file. And so when Quake launches, it just goes through all the pack files and just adds them all. All, uh, do I have pack explorer installed in here? I have it somewhere. But anyway, if you, if you open this up, you'd see that it has sounds and textures and models and stuff like that. And it just basically adds them all to the directories without needing to, you know, actually add them. You just add a pack, pack file and then all that stuff kind of appears in your, in your mod. Don't really need to worry about that. Um, okay, so let's start off by talking about how to um, configure stuff. Uh, I'm not using FTE server right now, so we don't need that. Uh, Default.config. So, or config.config, which one? They look pretty similar to me. I think default.config is used if you reset your, your key binds, the defaults, it'll go back to this. Visual Studio Code, yeah, that's VS Code. Mm -hmm. So when you when you play the game, it reads this config file here. And so double click on it and you can see all the different keybinds and all the different settings and things like that. Um, I'll go through these relatively quickly, I think. Um, the number keys are used to select weapons. So if you hit the five key, the five key is bound to impulse five. What is impulse five? Um, so literally when you bind a key like that, it, it's as if you go to the console and you type impulse space five, hit return from the keyboard. What does that mean? Well, there's what's called an impulse system in Quake because they don't know the names of all the different things you're gonna be doing. Like, uh, I don't know, customizing a class. Like Quake has no idea about any of that stuff. So it allows you to just send a generic command to the server. And so you could send command number 200 to the server. And the server mod will be like, oh, an impulse came in, impulse 200. Oh, I know what that means, change the map. And so uh, the user could bind a key to like impulse 200 and then whenever to M and then they could hit M. It sends impulse 200 to the server. The server splits it apart, says, oh, impulse 200 came in, called this function, oh. Yeah, he's the owner of the, the server, he can change the map. And, and so basically these are sort of generic commands. Generic command one, generic command two, things like that. And the mod itself has code to handle these impulses. Uh, by default, impulses one through one through nine switch your weapon. So if you hit five, if you hit one, it'll switch to that weapon, right? Like a normal, like in a normal first person shooter. Um, if you hit tab, it shows the scores of the game, um, space jumps. And you might notice that it says plus jump. So when you bind a key this way in Quake, what happens is if you put a plus there, then it will send one keystroke when you hit the key and it'll send another one when you release the key. So when you hit the key, it will send the jump up command to the server. And when you release the key, it sends the jump down command. In, uh, in uh, Unreal Engine, it corresponds to key pressed and key, re key, key pressed event and the key released event. And so these are just simple things. They happen when you press them, nothing else. But anything that has a plus on it, that will send one command when you hit tab. So you basically have to hold tab down. You hold tab down, it shows the scores. You release tab and the scores vanish. So anything that has a plus there has two uh, events really bound to it. One on key press, one on key release. Looks like the space for an enter key are binded to the same function jump. Yes, that is correct. So you can jump by either hitting enter or space. Then these are specific Team Fortress commands. Debt pipe sets off the pipe bombs of the um, Demolition Man. The Demolition Man can put pipe bombs around the world. You hit comma, blows them up. Um, let's see, mouse wheel down. Impulse 10 is next weapon. So if you mouse wheel down, it'll cycle through all your weapons. Mouse wheel up though, I could, I could bind it to previous weapon. Uh, I instead have it bound to ID. When you look at somebody and you mouse wheel up, it'll show their, their name. So you can see who, who people are in the game. Uh, backslash is bound to nothing. Um, tilde, the tilde key, the um, 
back tick key pulls down the console. That's actually pretty important. Um, so you can enter commands in the console, like to connect to a server. If you're not using the server browser, which you probably will not be using, you have to pull down the console and type connect and the IP address of the person you're trying to connect to. We'll go through that later. Um, Fame death, uh, engineer build a building, um, create a hologram of yourself if you have that item. Um, reload your weapon is bound to R by default. WASD is forward, backwards, left, and right. Uh, that's strafe right, not turn right. Um, walk forward, walk backwards. Um, zoom in, zoom out, E and Q. You could, you could rebind those realistically. It's kind of annoying to hit them accidentally. So you can just take those out if you want. Uh, yeah, tilde is bound to toggle console. Again, same as back tick. Uh, forward, backwards, left, right are also bound to the arrow keys if you like using those. If you have the debt packs, there are insert, delete, page down, and end to uh, do uh, demolition packs with different timers. What you, what you do is you hold down insert, let's say, and your character will sit there for like a few seconds setting up a giant explosive pack. Then when it's ready, he drops it and it'll start a insert as a five second cooldown. It'll, it'll count down from five down to one and you need to run because it blows up everybody in the room, dies. And you can set it with a 20 second delay or a 50 second delay if you want. So one thing that I'll do is I'll be a spy. I'll go into an enemy base, drop a 50 second debt pack in the courtyard. I'll run in, get the flag and run out and time it just right. So that right when I'm about to hit the courtyard and they're all waiting for me to kill me, the debt pack goes off, they all die. And then I run out through the, the shower of blood and corpses. So that's, that's an advanced strategy. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, F1 will change your class. F2 will re-customize yourself. F3 changes your team. F12 is a screenshot. Clicking sends the attack command. And again, clicking sends key press attack, release, key release attack. And so for some weapons like the um, uh, assault cannon, uh, they have to be held down in order to work. And then uh, mouse two throws your first grenade. So if you right click, it throws your first grenade, and if you middle click, it throws your second grenade. And notice these are also plus things. So if you hold it, your guy will pull the pin out, and you can actually cook the grenade if you want. So normally when you throw the grenade, there's a three second delay on it. People will see it and leave. But what you can do is you can pull the pin, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, two and a half, and th throw it, and then you can actually have it explode right on top of somebody if you got the skills for it. This game definitely rewards, re rewards skill-based uh, play. And of course, they got rid of the grenades from Team Fortress 2, which I dislike. Um, crouching, um, zooming in, zooming out. And then these things are all like uh, the renderer settings and stuff like that. Um, this right here is the, uh, if you want to inverse your mouse look, you can change that from minus to positive or ver vice versa. Um, the rest of this, I don't think you need to worry about too much. Field of view 90, you can modify that if you want. Uh, Real-time lighting. Hmm. I think most of this other stuff you need to worry about right now. Okay. So that is your config file. You can edit those key bindings however you want. It's like the sticky bombs in TF2. Yeah, yeah. The, the... Okay, so uh, except they're not sticky in Team Fortress One, they fall to the ground. Okay, so the server config is here in uh, Clan Prozac Server Config. Double click on that, and uh, you can change the name of your server because it will by default um, uh, announce that to a master server, so people can join in on you. Uh, by default, the uh, password to your server is foobar. You want to change that. <laughs> you want to change that. Don't use the default password because then anybody will be able to kick people off the server or change the map or whatever. Okay. So right now, everybody, please go into your fortress directory. <laughs> go into your quake release directory. Go into the fortress directory. Edit the cpserver.config and change the damn default password, please. While I drink my boba from a new boba place. Infinity.
Infinity. Cool name. So, uh, yeah, change it to not that, please. <laughs> okay. So, uh, by default, games take half an hour. Or until one of the teams hits 100 kills. 100 frags, we call them. So the term frag uh, actually comes from the Vietnam War era. Um, there was this um, notion that if a um, officer was kind of taking dumb risks and trying to get the people killed, that, you know, let's go charge that machine gun nest, that one of the soldiers would pull a grenade and toss it on the, the officer and kill him. It's called fragging the officer. And whether or not that actually happened or to what degree it happened, I don't know. Uh, but that's where the term comes from. And so, look at the admin password, not that, please. <laughs> nice. Hunter123. Um, you probably want pauseable turned off. Otherwise, anybody on the server can pause the server by hitting the pause key. Probably don't want that. Uh, you can turn gravity up and down. That's cool. Um, that's the maximum speed the players can run. Um, timeout, uh, I think it's for people disconnecting if they are idle. 32 players maximum, which is, again, better than Overwatch, and it drives me crazy that this somehow can work on a system with 32 megs of RAM on a modem, and modern Call of Duty technology can't run over, you know, gigabit Ethernet. Uh, you can have four spectators attached as well that aren't playing. They're just watching the game. There's, like, streaming built into it. There's streaming built into Quake, like, way before this whole Twitch thing took off. Uh, this allows people who connect to the server to download any maps, models, and sounds they don't have. Why not? Knock yourself out and let them play. Um, this team play setting here is complicated. Um, it's a bit field. I don't know if you guys have studied bit fields before. But basically, um, you have to go through the documentation. But you can choose, uh, can I hurt my teammates? Yes or no. Teammates take full damage, team, teammates take half damage, teammates take no damage. Uh, if they do take damage and I kill teammates, do I get punished for it? Um, so there's a uh, cursing system so that if you kill five of your teammates uh, within a certain period of time, that it takes away all of your weapons and spins you around. <laughs> that was one of the more amusing bits of code that I've written. You just sit there, you just spin around, and all of your teammates can kill you, and you can't do anything. You just die over and over again. And every time they kill you, you come immediately back to life, and you lose a point. Your, your teammates can all just sit there and kill you without any penalties for like 30 seconds or something. So it gives you motion sickness, and your teammates get to get revenge on you. Which I have not seen replicated in any video game. I'm sorry. That is something I'm going to claim for myself right there. Can't open the file it's a text file so uh, it, it's just a text file so open it open it with a notepad all right just open it open it with notepad where's text files? um a bounty mode allows you to sell frags that's the system by which try to it will not let you open it with notepad Um, open with more apps, maybe Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code can open it. WordPad can open it. All right, so uh, yeah, money 10,000 is the default. That's what the mod was balanced around. Uh, people who play custom TS and run run servers tend to up it a little bit to 11,000, which creates a little bit more of an overpowered field to the game. Like everybody's got a little bit more money to buy stuff and you know have extra options and stuff like that. Bounty mode allows selling frags. So if you type upgrade, then it sells off up to 50 of your frags and gives you extra money. 
But then you lose that if you recustomize again. So it's actually a really, in my opinion, interesting decision to make where you can upgrade, but you lose flexibility. Neo mode is an interesting mode. It's not it's not very well balanced. We tried it last year. Where basically um, one person becomes Neo and they regenerate health and ammo and move very quickly and everybody else is a um, Mr. Anderson. No wait, no, Mr. What are the what are the Johnson? Is that what they're called? The uh, agents, right, from uh, the Matrix. So one person's Neo from the Matrix, the other one's the the uh, agents. And then if an agent kills Neo, which is really hard to do, then you become Neo. And the, the, it doesn't scale very well at all. Like with enough agents in the game, because Neo gets regeneration proportional to how many agents are in the game. If there's like 10 people in the game, you regenerate life so fast that like literally three people could be just shooting you and you're regenerating through it. And uh, so the only way that I, I found to kill the, the Neo was to drop debt packs. And so like you'd be fighting all these different agents and I'd just go through and be sitting there in the corner with my demolition pack and then run for it run for cover and blow up Neo, the nuclear bomb, basically. It's the only way that I found to, to do it. So don't, don't mess around with that. Rocket Jump 2 will double, look, for, yeah, click more apps span and see if you can, um, see if you can select. It's, it's Windows 10 nonsense is what it is, but um, you probably right click and open with code. Like you can try that as well. Or if you click more apps, it should show notepad there. Um, Open, or you can click on open with, choose another app maybe. And then I would, I would just select notepad or wordpad and choose always use that to open config files. Smith, that's right, Smith. Okay, uh, pre-match mode. So if you uh, do pre-match mode, then um, you can have like a minute before the game starts. So we would always do that when, when in like professional games, clan games and things like that. You'd have like a minute or two of pre-match and everyone would just run around. It doesn't count for anything as everybody's connecting to the server. And then once the pre-match mode's up, everyone dies, everyone respawns and the game begins. Uh, are you looking on the store? Uh, yeah, don't look on the store. It should just be, you know, things installed on, on your machine or just right click. Like I said, just right click and choose open with BS code. That's a, easy enough way of doing it. So it looks like the Windows Store there, which is uh, kind of garbage. Uh, it will not allow you to right click. Not allow you to right click. Odd. Well, then, I don't know. It takes you to the Windows Store. Yay, Windows Store. It's so awesome. Yeah, so when you click on it, click on more apps, and it should it should show all the text editors on your system. But if you have to, then install one of those stupid text editors from the App Store. It's really ridiculous. Microsoft's such a garbage company. Sorry. Um, I mean, this this has been a solved problem since Windows ninety five to associate a file type in a in an editor. You know. Uh, yeah. Okay. So A is for auto teaming. So with auto teaming on, people will get placed into a team uh, if the teams are unbalanced. Uh, G enables a grappling hook. Um, Jello water is amazing, by the way. I highly recommend you turn Jello water on just to experience it. Um, and then the rest of it doesn't matter. Yeah, by, and this is the default map. So by default, it'll default to ball six, which is a good one. So yeah, so basically these things here are the settings and uh, as part of your mod you can add new settings and things like that so you can turn your mod of my mod on or off using things like this like neo is a mod of custom team fortress and so by turning this thing on or off then the mod says oh we should be doing neo mode instead of default mode and so on and so forth so um the sniper factor is uh to reduce how good snipers are, I guess. They're a little bit OP. They're toned down a little bit. Okay, so let's uh, let's go through this. Uh, maybe maybe we can all play together. That might be fun. Let's see if I can run you through setting up my firewall. Um, I got my VPN on. I might disconnect, hang on.
Head up, head up, head up, head up. Can you guys still hear me? Still on. Okay. So let's let's run through how to open up a firewall port. So here is my. Uh, I don't know. It, it looks like some sort of like demonic altar or something like that. I don't know. It's a fairly decent router, but man, I don't know. It's like if Pinhead comes out of it, I would not be surprised. So what we need to do is, um, uh, yeah. So you need to go to your port forwarding part of your firewall. And what I've done here is I've port forwarded port 27500 to Ultima, which is the name of my computer. It's named after you know, the um, video game series, and also after the spell in Final Fantasy. So it will port forward TCP and is the more apps been clickable? Might have glitched since it did it to me once. I guess use the Microsoft store. It, I, it makes me feel dirty to say that, but just like Microsoft is so terrible. Like it normally has a choose and executable option in every other version of Windows until now. Um, yeah, for, for those of you at home, it does this. You used to be able to just pick an executable. Now it's like, look, we're an app in the Microsoft Store. If you use a Microsoft Store. So just install Notepad or something from the Microsoft Store and just take a shower afterwards. Um, and then SSH is forwarded to the Raspberry Pi that is the server for Seaside 45. It's the little Raspberry Pi sitting behind my monitor over here. And um, that is the class server. It's just a little Raspberry Pi 4. Okay. And so you, this is what you need to do to get the game working. So what I'm going to do is run the server and just see if you guys can connect. I was trying to think if having the VPN would have messed it up somehow. I don't I don't think so now that it's off. So I'm going to launch the server. And um, the host name is csi4x.asuscom.com. And um, you should be able to connect to the server that way. Put that in here. So how do you how do you connect to it? Let's see if this works first of all. Launch client. Well, this is connecting to local hosts. So let me first of all move it over. Windowed. Switch back to monitor one. Great. Uh, a crash? I might have messed something up. There's already a better server client than dedicated Valheim. switching back to monitor one. I wish it was just an option for like what monitor it'd be on. I guess that works. I don't need resolution. Who needs resolution? I'm just here to show you guys. Okay, so you can see that somebody has connected to the server. So how do you connect to the server? You type connect and then you type in that um, csi4x.asuscom.com like that. And that will, um, that's a dynamic DNS 
uh, thing that ASUS provides as part of buying the routers, which is really nice. And so basically, if my IP addresses here ever change, then it'll automatically change the DNS records to point to it, which is really nice. And so you can see that we've got user three and Kearney. Okay. All right, so uh, go ahead and, and uh, hit tilde to bring the console down. And you can uh, type in um, name, whatever. And so type in namespace, whatever name you want to change your name to. Like I said, in Quake, we do a lot of things from the console just because um, this interface here isn't really customizable by mods, right? Um, these are all the default options. Mods do a lot more things than are in that, that interface. And so we typically use the console for a lot of this stuff. So Vakalar, Jonah have joined in. So yeah. Um, well, I guess I'll go on Team Red, and I will be a heavy weapons guy. Ugh, that full screen flash blend. How do you connect to the server? You type in connect, like that. Connect csi4xacescom.com. Just like that. Okay, and then you change your name like this, name, yellow, whatever. Hey, do you wanna play? 300 health, that's really 300 good. armor, 300 armor, 100 health. All right, go to Chakra. And I think it turns yellow water on, so <gasps> not in there, not in there, you're gonna get stuck. You're gonna get me motion sickness. Yeah. Oh, there's the enemy, there's the enemies. The blue's the enemy. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Sensitivity's kinda high. Right? Shoot him, hold it, hold down attack, hold down attack. You have to point at the enemies, girl. Point at the enemies. Point at the enemies, you have to hold down attack. Hold down attack. Hold down attack. To Trying to run the flag? You can't go in there, that's their base. Do we go this way or this up? Do we go up? You could go that way. The game looks reasonably good. I don't know if you guys saw the like shiny reflections on the on the floor and stuff. Come on! Where is that? Uh, around. Yeah. Go that way. <laughs> Chipping down. Alright, let's see what students are saying online. You have to jump. All right, we'll pause the recording now so you guys don't have to watch my daughter dancing around on jello water. Sorry, so, I just here, want to here, capture here. I know, I, I know. You can, I'll let you capture it. Your key's been stolen, great. But anyway, so the jello water okay. thing is, the jello water thing is this, where I made the water bouncy. Because it's, and it's like it was a it. bug. Like um, it. But it's not a bug anymore. It's, it's a you bug. You did it. But yeah, so I... Uh, no, actually, you, you turned it off. You, um, you, you, it's not a bug anymore. I made it a feature. It was a bug that turned into a feature. If you hold down jump when you're on jello water, you won't bounce off of it. And when you let go, you fly off. I was, I was trying to do uh, the scuba commando to um, be able to swim and breathe underwater. And that's how you kill people. Right. Wait, how come you can't collect your key back? You have to discard it for 30 seconds. Is, are those your friends who are, who are playing? They're my enemies. They're not are, my friends. I mean, are they your enemy and friends? <laughs> your friends who are playing as your enemies? Right, let, me, let me pause the recording now. Is that, see if we can is, get everybody on. Is that 
Are those your friends who are they're, they're the class? They're the class classmates. Yeah, mm -hmm. students in my class. And resume. Okay, so we just played Quake a little bit, and we got six people in, uh, and running around, getting a feel for the game. So what we went over today was the configuration settings for the player, which is under config.config, .config, and if you want to just play the game, you double click on launch client, step one, launch client, step two, type connect, space, the IP address of the server you want to connect to, and then uh, step three uh, from the console, again, the console is brought up with a tilde, Type name, space, whatever your name is. And then you can play. Uh, we'll play it again next time, Lavi. Hopefully more people will have it uh, downloaded and ready by then. Um, you can water all over my keyboard, dude. If we get a, get a, go to a little hand towel. Um, so, yeah. And then if you want to run a server, which uh, you will for your modding, you will run the um, launch server thing here. And... Uh, if you want to configure your server, that's under cpserver.config. And you want to put in a, a password that is not FUBAR. <laughs> it's not FUBAR. Okay. Do we mod with your group? Yes, you'll be modding with your group. I recommend using the Visual Studio Code live share ability so that you guys can all work on it. Oh my gosh, there was water all over my keyboard. How'd you do that? Is there, it's like on my F keys. like. I don't water you there, girl. Yes, you'll be modding with your group. Uh, let's just not save that. Okay. So let's go over the modding a little bit. Let's do a little introduction here. So, again, if you want to mod the source code, you right click on source code, choose open with code, and then that will pull up the whole directory that you need in VS Code. All the files on the left, all the files on the left, all the code on the right. And so uh, last time we added the uh, splat or sploot or whatever it was, sound. I guess that guy was the one we did. Last time we added a sound last time, it's still in there today, which is really quite funny. So I'm going to go ahead and revert discard changes and put it back to stock again and discard changes. Okay. And then. And then save all, save. All right. Um, okay, so let's go back to the files here. And uh, you okay, girl? And then if I want to rebuild that with a splurt take, taken out. Water. Then I would come into the source code directory and run make.bat in here. Make .bat. Run that. And you'll see it compiles the entire directory. There's absolutely no concept of like a make file or anything like that. I mean, it is called make.bat, but it, it literally uh, compiles the entire thing. And um, it, it does so pretty quickly, <laughs> despite recompiling the entire thing every time. It's actually quite. Um, quite fast. And then the next time you launch the uh, server, it will have the splurt sound removed from it. Okay. All right, so let's go over the basics of Quake C. How about that? All right, so QCP files. It should not be there, okay. These QCP files should not be there. All right, so let's go over the basics of it. Um, yeah, weapons is a good place to start. Everyone understands how weapons work. Okay, so Quake C is a scripting language. It's pretty basic. It doesn't have a lot of the things you would expect from like a, you know C plus plus and things like that. It's based on the C programming language. It is um, pretty. hard drive working. Come on, Windows, don't be dumb. Seriously. When you put in your new when your new game card, was it only an upgrade was it only an upgrade 
on graphics or was it an upgrade on fastness too? Was it yeah, an it, upgrade it, on fastness too? Yes. Windows shell has decided to crash on me. Good job, Windows. You're the best. You are super awesome. Is, is it because you just put in a new game card? No, I don't think so. Why do you think it's doing that then? Um, let's see, where is the desktop Windows Manager? I might go back to the book fair with Mommy someday. Okay, have fun, girl. On a different day. Can you make your own class? No, there are no classes in um, there are no classes in Quixie. Uh, oh, you mean like your own class, like in the game? Sure, yeah, you can do that. Um, absolutely. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're, I, I'm not going to go over anything that detailed right now. I'm just going to go over the basics, and the basics should involve being able to open up a text file. <laughs> I mean, that's not, that's up, not basic it? at all. It's just okay. it's just your computer doing stuff. Cool. Cool, cool. All right, client.qc. Did I change something? Let's revert that one also and close out. All right, so let's look at how Quake C works. So the um, the basics of what happens, the interaction between the client and the server is that the client's going to issue commands like impulse one, right? And um, slash undo, come on, front slash, front slash, impulse, there we go. So, and so, uh, it, when, when you do that, it sets a variable on the player called impulse, and you can basically just check it and then do something. So if the player types in impulse one, then it'll switch to a melee weapon, if the person types in impulse two, then it switches to the sniper rifle or a shotgun. Uh, if you type in impulse three, it switches to the super shotgun. If you type in four, it switches to the you know, nail gun or laser cannon. And so each each weapon has a key. And if you have multiple in that category, then it rotates between them. So if you have like both the um, sniper rifle and the shotgun, then when you hit two, it'll say if your current weapon is the sniper rifle and you have this shotgun, then it sets your shot, you know, and so it'll, it'll rotate between the different options on each key. Um, let's see, cycle weapon command. So that's if you hit next, if you hit next weapon, then there's all this logic to handle rotating between all the different weapons in the game. Um, building impulses, pull down impulse commands. Yeah, so basically this is, this is, Kind of the end. Let's see where that gets called from. No impulse, impulse commands. Not opened or specified a folder. Yes, I have. Okay. Um, so the basic input is here in weapon frame. Okay, so um, every frame this function gets called by the player. And um, this is sort of the entry point for where the server and the client connect to each other. There, there's other th entry points into the code, like when it loads a map and things like that. But this is kind of the main, as you as you were, as you will. Okay. So when the user hits, clicks a button or, or hits a key or something like that, this is the function that handles it. Okay. So uh, if there's an intermission running, no, let's not worry about the intermission running. If you have the menu open, then it will like the menus where you pick things on the screen, then it goes into the menu system. Um, and then uh, if they typed in an impulse, then it will call that function that will handle the impulse they typed in. Um, and if that handled it, then it clears the impulse. Otherwise, uh, some, some impulse commands have a delay, so you can't just spam commands. So um, if there's a cooldown on it, then only if the cooldown's expired, it'll handle the rest of the impulse commands. So, so let's say the, the person, I don't know, types in, uh, let's, let's say they click, okay? So the click is held in button zero. If you click, that'll be set to true. 
And so, uh, and you, you're not holding it down. So if you just click, this is the code that will handle it. So the person clicks right here inside of weapons.qc, it will handle the click. Okay. And so it basically will say, if you have the weapon sniper rifle, the sniper rifle charges, right? And so what happens is it uh, um, starts charging the sniper rifle. Um, it, it saves the current time. And so when you release it, it subtracts the time you released it from the time you held down to d figure out how much damage you should do. So when you hold when you hold down the sniper rifle, it saves the current time. Um, if you have a rocket launcher, um, and and you've got the laser sight on it, then it does a similar thing. It creates a laser dot. The assault cannon also is a weapon you have to hold down. But for everybody else, then it just calls attack, and uh, and that's that's a function that will shoot the weapon. Right, and it's a function that will figure out which weapon you have and then call the attack function on that weapon. So for example, um, if you have the Daedalus rocket launcher, it will call this function. If you have the Mauser, it'll call this function. If you have the, uh, let's just do something basic, let's do the rocket launcher. And so um, if you click when you have the rocket launcher open, then it will, um, there's a little bit of complexity there because we've got the anime rockets that it has to handle. To basically, let's see if we can zoom in. Can we zoom in? No, that's not. Uh, view, appearance, zen mode, zoom in. Yeah, there we go. Make it a little easier for you guys. So if you're just firing a normal rocket launcher, it'll take one ammo. If you're in anime rocket mode, it fires six rockets. If you do not have enough shots left, then the number of shots you will fire is equal to how much ammo you have. So if you've got three rockets left, then the Macross Missile Massacre will fire three rockets. Um, then it decrements how much ammo you have based on how many you shoot. Um, if you didn't have anything left at all, then it sets the ammo to zero. Um, if you didn't have any shots, it just returns. It doesn't fire anything. Then it plays the sound for shooting the rocket. It calls kick player, which does the recoil. So when you shoot, there's a recoil action. Uh, that's only if you're a player. And then it calls the make rocket function. The, ma the make rocket function is um, something I basically wrote entirely myself. And um, it creates a projectile in the world and gives it a position, gives it a direction, gives it a velocity, gives it a model. And so this, this function here is sort of the model function for like how you make a projectile in the world. Okay. So all the stuff down there is just kind of like handling the ammo, right? Things, but it all culminates in just calling make rocket. So it's going to call make rocket. Let's just say we're going to fire one rocket so we don't have to worry about loops. Um, to fire multiple rockets. So what it does is it um, figures out which way we're looking. So you remember how we talked about there's a forward vector and a right vector and an up vector? This is um, what figures that out in Quake, in Quake C. So you call that and then you can get the forward vector like this. So dir is a vector. Yeah, it's a vector. So a vector is a 3D vector. And so basically this gets the direction the rocket's gonna go in. The, the direction the rocket is gonna go in is the direction we're looking. Does that make sense? You guys, I, I've been talking for a while and there's like dead silence on the on the Discord channel. But like all, all the stuff with like clicking and ammo and all that stuff, it culminates in this function right here getting called and it is going to make a projectile spawn. It makes a blank, it, it actually just makes a blank object in the world. It could be anything. It's not a projectile, it's just an object in the world. That creates a new actor in the world. We set the owner to be us so that we get credit if it kills somebody. We set its movement type to be missile, so it flies in a line without gravity. Uh, it is solid, so it will impact things. Uh, it is a rocket. Um, and then this, though, is pretty important. We're getting the, the direction that we're going to travel is the direction the player is looking. And for all the stuff that you're modding, 
you're not going to have to write any of this stuff from scratch. You're going to look at existing code that does stuff already. There's already code in there to do hit scans. There's code in there to do projectiles. That's all you need. <laughs> There's code to do timers, touch, think, and whatever the other two was. <laughs> touch and think and trace. Yeah, are the are the three T's? Touch, trace, think. Right. They're all there's all examples of stuff in here. If you want to see a hit, hit scan works, look up the shotgun code. But anyway, so the velocity that we're going is the direction the player is looking. That's going to be a unit vector. So it's going to be moving one centimeter a second, very slow, right? So by default, the uh, this line of code here sets the direction the missile is going to be traveling in equal to the direction the player is looking, which is a unit vector. So we'll have a velocity of one. It'll have a speed of one. And so we need it to go faster. So uh, the different types of rockets have different speeds. And so uh, we multiply the velocity by the speed. So before the velocity was a unit vector, we multiply it by I don't know, 500 or something. Now it's a vector with a length of 500. Do you guys remember how we talked about vector times scalar? That's, there it is. Okay, you know, you gotta understand that. So whatever direction we're looking, we multiply it by 500. Now it's moving 500 centimeters a second in the direction we're looking. Um, and various options will slow it down. A laser guided rocket travels slower. The heat seeking rocket travels slower. Anyway, none of that matters. Um, if you buy the faster rockets, it'll travel faster. The angle, the angle the rocket should be pointed at, by default, it'll be pointing at zero, zero, zero. The angle, and it'll travel sideways when it comes out of the rocket launcher. And so you need to set the direction it's looking equal to vector angles as a function that points it in the direction that it's traveling. Go for it. And so the direction it's traveling is this way, so it'll rotate it to point it that way. And um, for some reason, the x component. Oh yeah, if you want to if you want to get individual components out of um, a velocity, let's say. So let's say we want the vertical velocity to be zero for some reason. We can say new miss underscore z equals zero. So if you want if you want the uh, the the rocket launcher to only travel horizontally and not up and down at all, then you can access x, y, and z out of the vector by doing an underscore z like that. It's a weird it's a weird system, um, but that's how it is. It's a scripting language. So you can individually grab. This is going to grab the x component, and for some reason it comes out backwards from this, and I don't know why. So I just I don't know, fixed it that way, and then. Uh, Remember how we said touch, think, and trace? So what we say is when this object, when this rocket collides with something, call this function. It's a callback. So if we're shooting the Daedalus rocket launcher, it'll call the Daedalus touch. If we're shooting the regular rocket launcher, it'll call missile touch. And so basically we create an object in the world. We give it a um, velocity. We've given it an angle. We need to give it a position somewhere within here. Location is going to be set. Somewhere within here, location is going to be set. There it is, set origin. So we set its origin to be our origin plus the direction we're looking times eight centimeters and up a little bit. So it's going to be our origin uh, in the direction we're looking and up a little bit because the gun's a little bit up from the midpoint. And uh, we set the size of it to be zero, zero, zero. So it's just a point traveling through the world when it contact, but it's solid. So when it contacts something, it will call. When it contacts something, it will call this function. So what we've done is we've created a rocket. It has a position, it's got a direction, it's got a velocity. The physics engine will update its position every frame. We don't have to handle that. And when that rocket impacts with something, it calls this function. And this function here will do the damage. It will do an explosion, play the graphics, all that kind of stuff. We set the, the, uh, the model of it using the set model function. So that creates the image of the rocket coming out. And, and that's about it. So uh, by default, we, give, we do give it a think function. And the reason why we give it a think function is that if the rocket travels for more than five seconds and it hasn't hit anything, it's probably outside of the world. So if you shoot rockets straight up, those things will travel forever. They won't hit anything. And so what we say is have that rocket think in five seconds. So in five seconds, it calls the remove function, which just deletes it from the world. So 
Uh, if the rocket doesn't hit anything, by that point it's traveled, I don't know how far, it's traveled pretty damn far. So if it hasn't contacted anything in five seconds, just delete it. That way we don't have infinite rockets, you know, flying around. And that's it. That makes a projectile. It, there's a little bit more complexity to it just because I have the same, I use the same function for four different weapons because it's the same code. And so I just basically combined copy pasted code four times into one. And then just wherever there's a difference, like in the speed, I just have a few if statements and, um, and basically say, if we're firing the Daedalus cannon, when it hits something called the Daedalus function, if we're firing the incendiary cannon, when it hits something called the incendiary touch, if we're firing a shotgun called that, if we're firing a room. And so what happens when these things hit something? So when the rocket hits something, uh, it checks to see what it hit. If it hit the sky, go away, it vanishes. Uh, the damage is 92. And um, we set the death message to be, you were killed by a rocket launcher, basically. So if the other person could be damaged, not everything that you hit in the game could be damaged. Like if you hit a wall, you can't damage it, usually. So if the, if the guy you hit has health, then it will do between 92 and 132 damage. And then that line right there will be the last thing we're gonna talk about today. That highlighted line right there is how you actually damage people. So that line right there will damage the person you hit. So we will damage the person we hit. Whenever there's a collision, it sets a variable called other. Other is the person you hit. So you create a rocket, the rocket flies through the world, it contacts Vacalar, it calls this function. It calls this function called T-missile touch. Other is set to be Vacalar. Self is the rocket. Self.owner is the player that shot the rocket. So it's gonna damage Vacalar. The source of the damage is me, the rocket. The owner of the rocket is the person who shot it. They're gonna get credit for the points for killing somebody. The amount of damage they do is equal to damage plus bonus. So 92 plus a random amount like this. So between, uh, sorry, 102 and 122 damage. So a little bit of randomness in there to keep it interesting. Uh, I don't know what that means. And that is the type of damage. So every damage you do has a type, fire, nail, lightning, you know, and that interacts with things in different ways. And so in this case, it's an explosion effect. And so if you take half damage from explosions, you take half damage from a rocket launcher. Then after it impacted, so this is if, it, if there's a direct hit on Vacalar, boom, 120 damage directly into it. Then it blows up. And so a direct shot with a rocket is gonna do a lot of damage to Vacalar, right? So it's going to um, both hit him 420 damage and then it explodes. And so the explosion is gonna be uh, 92 damage. And so that the radius of an explosion, the radius of an explosion is actually equal to the size of the damage. So if you do 92 damage, it creates a explosion 92 centimeters in radius. So the more damage the rocket does, the bigger the radius it affects. It's kind of cool. Looks like the code that used to be published in computer magazines in the 80s. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty simple, straightforward scripting language, you know? And so if, so if you guys wanted to modify the um, rocket launcher to do more, you can just like, you know, change this number right here. Save it, compile it, see if it works. Okay. And so this is gonna damage everybody within 92 centimeters. The amount of damage they do is, there's a fall off. So the further you are away from the rocket, the less damage it does to you. It then, uh, this is how you do explosions in the world. So it broadcasts to everybody on the server, an explosion at that place. This is server code, remember? So the server is gonna broadcast to all the clients that can see it, um, everybody that can see it, there has been an explosion at this point. And then it uh, multicasts that to everybody that can even potentially hear the sound. So multicast PHS, it doesn't send it to all the clients. Because remember, Quake has a really good networking model. It's simple, but it works really well. And so the engine knows, based on where you are in the world, if you have a chance of hearing it or seeing it. And so it will only transmit data to people that have a chance of hearing it or seeing it. And so it doesn't just send it to everybody every time. Only people that are within, within range. 
we'll get the, the information. Then the rocket goes away, and that's it. That's how you do a rocket. So uh, maybe next time we'll pick this up with, um, don't save. Oh, uh, maybe next time we'll pick this up with like um, hit scan weapons, and then maybe we'll go over AI. Uh, AI is pretty easy to do in Quake C, and then that'll give you an idea of the uh, the way the way things are. It's it's a pretty straightforward scripting language, and I and I do want to play more with you just so you kind of um, understand how everything works. Right, you got to play a game before you can modify it. So we'll make sure you guys get Quake installed next time. We'll play it together for. I don't know, half an hour we'll play a game. Divide up into teams and you know, have at it. And try the different options and, and see what they do and see what you like, see what you don't like. Think critically about games, game design. And um, if there's something you don't like, you can modify it. It's a cool feeling. It's a really neat feeling when there's something you don't like about a game and you can change it. Because that, that freedom has been lost. You know, most games nowadays, if I don't like... Um, Animal Crossing, you know, I can't mod it. My daughter wants to mod Animal Crossing. We can't because game companies these days don't have that same philosophy of open source and modding that, you know, companies like id used to have back in the day. So, um, for, for, the, for the detriment, I think, of the industry. Because you know? people learn to make games by modding other games. The Team Fortress guys were modders of Quake. And then they got hired by Valve and made Team Fortress 2. Team Fortress 2 wouldn't exist if it wasn't for id Software making their stuff open source and letting um, people mod it. You know, they, And they benefited from it too. The id Software people made tons of money because Quake was modifiable. You I don't know. Some some games let you make maps or whatever, but it's not the same thing. It's really not the same thing. So. All right, so that's it for today, guys. Um, make sure you get uh, make sure you get Quake installed, ready to play next time, and we will learn some more Quake C next time. I'll take requests for like making quick mods, like last time we made that splat mod. Um, we can add new weapons, new AI, whatever. I, I know the engine pretty well, so um, nothing too crazy limited time but yeah and then uh then i want you guys to start kind of having at it okay. you never learned how to even start modding uh well you're gonna learn in this class you're gonna learn in this class yeah. is python a good language to learn sure yeah why not why not yeah all, any any kind of programming you learn is good and it, they all feed into each other they all feed into each other you learn c plus plus C++ will help you learn Java and vice versa. And Quake C is similar to C. And I don't know. It's, you know, you just get, it's like, you know, you just get good at programming in general. The specific languages don't actually matter particularly much. Although the, we, will, we will talk and complain and argue about which is best. At the end of the day, yeah, it's half dozen of one and six of the other, you know. change values, it's a mod. Yeah, and, and in fact, that's usually how I start with a mod. The first thing I do with a mod is I will change a number. This gun now does double damage. This gun now does 100 times damage. Then I go into the game, brrr, okay, wow, look at the things exploding. Okay, it works. Like, that's how I modded Rainbow Six, right? I found, I found the place where the numbers were and started changing them, you know? And so for this game, I would think the first mod you should make is um, upping the damage on the rocket launcher or the shotgun. I was always confused how you even access the numbers, let alone the sound. It depends on the game. A lot of game companies don't make that data available anywhere, you know? And they do their damnness to hide it, and, and they're very anti-modder. Uh, but, like, for Rainbow Six, they're all in text files. And so, um, probably JSON format, something like that. I don't remember now. It was a long time ago. And so I, I was just poking around in the text files, and I found the place where the damage was set, and I upped it and re-ran the game, and sure enough, it upped the damage in the game, and... Um, the original Rainbow Six didn't have a sniper rifle, and so I'm like, I'm going to correct that. And so I made a, a mod that would change one of the worthless weapons into being long range, narrow spread, high damage, low firing rate. And it was the first mod for Rainbow Six, the original Rainbow Six. So. 
uh, change the scoring from 10 points to 100 points. Yeah, if you want. If you want. Yeah. Although it's more of a map setting. It's actually the maps that determine how many points a capture is worth. So you'd have to... We'd have to get into map editing. And uh, that's maybe a little bit outside the scope of this class. But we could if you wanted to. Or you just make it that every time somebody get, gets points added to their team, you multiply it by 10. Yeah, sure. That's doable. What about Skyrim mods? Uh, if you want to mod Skyrim, um, go for it. But um, I can't help you as much with Skyrim. I, I have modded Skyrim before, but I can't help you as much with it. And the trouble with Skyrim is that they have a modding system, but it's really janky. Um, if you ever have two different mods that modify the same cell or the same asset, then they conflict, and you have to cross your fingers and make sacrifices to the pagan gods of olden times to make it work right. Um, it's it, For all the fame of Skyrim mods, it's really not a very well-designed system. Uh, people have had to build third-party tools to handle modding in any sort of reasonable fashion. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's fun. Modding Skyrim is really easy. You can, get, you can get going with it real fast. So if you guys wanted to do a Skyrim mod instead of a Quake mod, I, I would allow it. Sure. Fallout New Vegas? Sure. I, I, like I said, I tried getting it to work, and man, Fallout New Vegas just needs somebody to come in and do a special edition, port it to 64 bits, because it'll... Yeah. Update the graphics. I would buy it again. I'd buy it three times. How many times have I bought Skyrim? I bought the collector's edition for the Xbox because I wanted the Alduin statue, you know. I bought it on PC at least twice. Maybe three times? No, I bought it on PS5. So I bought Skyrim four times. <laughs> yeah. When you use tile sets, you use JPEGs or BMPs. Uh, for Quake, you need to use BMPs, I would say. Uh, JPEGs have compression artifacts, and um, uh, JPEGs can, can look pretty ugly. Yep. So uh, that's it, guys. Um, yeah, if you if you want to propose a different um, game to mod, I'm fine. The best way of learning games is to mod them. That's all I can tell you. And you really start digging into it, and you see how people actually make things and actual things. Unreal Engine, we're starting from scratch, and so you're kind of building it from scratch, and it's kind of weird. You don't have any frames of reference. When you look at how things actually work in an actual game, you're like, oh, oh, I see how, oh, okay. So that's how the networking works. There's a broadcast thing, okay. And, oh, you just spawn an entity, and, and that's how you remove an entity. Okay, and you start understanding it from the inside out. And fortunately, you have a guide, me, who's modded Quake as much as, you know, almost anyone in the world. I'm sure there's people that have put more hours in than me, but there's not many. <laughs> there's not many. You know, I, I, I work actively on that for years, you know. And there, there's aspects that I, I don't touch. And so there's definitely people that are experts in areas that I don't touch. And that's how the world is. But, you know, when it comes to just general knowledge of Quake C and Quake modding and stuff like that, I'm pretty good. There's Some of my friends are better than me, but, you know. Definitely top one percent in the in the world. <laughs> out of the out of the seven billion people, I'm definitely in the top one billion. <laughs> All right. Uh, ooh, nice tile set. Yeah, that's cool. There's the checkerboard pattern where it is transparent. Yeah, yeah. The checkerboard usually means you, you can see through it, so the ladder will layer on top of something. It's called alpha blending or alpha transparency. It's cool. You could probably you could probably pull that into Quake. Yeah. Probably pull that into Quake. That'd be kind of cool. Harvest Moon Quake mod. I'd have to think about that. It's pretty cool. All right, so that's it for today, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming out, for playing. Uh, make sure you're ready for next time, and uh, I'll see you then.